Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. He Who Guides the Lost, written by Teller of Tall Tales. I expect to die to hurt. I watch my crumpled body mournfully, the gash in my body still leaking blood that stained my white fur pink. The Traxian responsible frozen halfway through a running step. It only hurt when the knife got my throat. Then it was like falling into a deep sleep. I started to sob. Mom was probably waiting for me at home with dinner. A dinner that would grow cold with my body. A soft hand lightened on my shoulder, and I looked up with puffy eyes into a hood filled with darkness, a soft, sympathetic voice echoing from within. I am sorry, but it is your time. Do not be afraid to mourn those you leave behind. My voice cracked as I spoke. Are you death? The figure's hood dipped in a solemn nod. Yes, I am death. I couldn't hold back as I burst into tears yet again, clutching at the helm of the figure's robe as I did. I cursed the unfair world I lived in, cursed the Traxy responsible. But mostly, I cried. A pair of gentle arms wrapped around me as death knelt down and hugged me, my face pressing against a chest covered in a graphic t-shirt. Death's soft voice consoled me. There, there, let it out. Death is hard on the soul. But it's harder on the living. Have you led a good life, Samuel? I nodded, eyes puffy with the dry tears as I pushed away from the cloaked figure, wiping my nose as I came to grips with my new reality. I try to, but I always seem to make things worse. Death nodded slowly, sitting next to me. The hem of the cloak lifted, revealing a pair of scuffed white sneakers. Death offered me a strange black cigarette that was already lit. I accepted it graciously. Smoking it seemed to help lift my fear and grief of death. Death himself didn't smoke one. Instead, he spoke. I remember my death well. My planet was ravaged by a plague. By the time you showed symptoms, it was already too late. But I didn't die to the plague. No. I was brought down by the hand of my fellow man, much like yourself. Death paused as if in memory. Me, a doctor, and an engineer were holed up in my parents' old grocery store. A gang of cannibals had surrounded us, only held off by a small amount of arms and ammunition. I remember a dream of a cottage on a grassy hillside with the doctor and the engineer living happily inside. No cannibals, no disease, just happiness. Death's hand had reflexively covered a part of their chest under the cloak. Then, with a sigh and a fluid motion, Death lowered his hood. A young human boy, no older than myself at sixteen, gazed at my body with me, a melancholic look on his face. I'd been gutshot. By the time I had the tree, I was already pretty much dead. But for a few minutes, I had clarity. I knew my life was worthless if I just laid there. Tears came to Death's eyes to my immediate surprise. So I told them to take the sewers and go, leave me behind to cover their retreat. A smile broke through the tears. I killed every last one of those bastards that tried to eat us. I died in the process, as you can no doubt see. Standing, death offered me a hand, a sympathetic, sad smile gracing his lips. We've got a long journey ahead of us. We better get started. I took death's hand and stood, letting him lead me from the alleyway and into the sun-soaked street. I relished the feeling of the sun on my fur one last time as we stepped into the emeterium. The only indicator that we were still moving was a simple cobblestone path stretching off into the darkness and disappearing. A question burned my mouth as I finally gathered the courage to ask. If you're walking this path with me, then who walked it with you? Death's face dropped slightly, his voice coming out as a barely a whisper. I walked this path alone. Playing the cobbles as I went. It took me a very long time to find where it ended. But when I reached that burning staircase at the end, Death gestured off into the darkness. I couldn't bring myself to walk up it. I turned around and walked all the way back where I met the soul of a little boy, the age of my brother before he passed. Death wiped his eyes. I couldn't make him walk this long, winding path on his own. 
So I walked with him, and when he walked up the staircase, I turned back yet again. Ever since, I have led lost souls to the stairs, helped them pass on before turning back for another. And as we rounded the bend, I was almost blinded by the brilliant, bright burning staircase that reached off into the dark sky. Death smiled and gestured me forward. Heart racing, I placed a foot on the first step. I looked back as Death turned to walk back. He stopped when I called out. What happens when I reach the top? Death didn't respond for a moment. Then, turning around, he smiled gently at me. I don't know. I've never walked up them. Then, with the swish of his cloak, Death had gone. Looking up to the point where the ladder cut off, I gulped. Then I started climbing. With each step, I felt lighter and lighter, until I started to float, no longer needing the stairs. I proceeded to float upwards at an ever-increasing pace, blinding white lights surrounding me as I rocketed upwards. Then I hit something that shattered like glass beneath my momentum. And suddenly, my throat hurt, like really hurt. I opened my eyes looking at the seating of the hospital room. Slowly, I sat up, and my mother threw arms around me, sobbing into my shoulder. Mom, I thought I'd died. My voice was croaky and hoarse. She shushed me, quietly but happily sobbing. You were, but you came back. Don't ever scare me like that again. My eyes slowly fell on the corner of the room. A young teenage human in a cloak smiled at me, holding a freshly turned hourglass. I blinked, and he was gone. End of story. Story number two. Why No Gods Claim Humanity, written by Mercury the Dina. Thank you for your haste in coming to this meeting, Cardinal. Now sit down and listen closely. And before you ask, no, you cannot leave. The doors are locked and the guards are under strict instructions to kill anyone who leaves without my approval. No, you are not being demoted, killed, or banished. You are here because you were judged to be a man of strong enough character and faith to cope with the information which you will be given while also being intelligent and rational enough to accept it and its implications. This meeting is centered around one question. Why do no gods claim humanity? It is a common question asked by many, even those ranked high among the church, yet one which, for most, lacks satisfactory answers. Humans are a simple race. They cling to the borders of the mountains and wildlands, spreading themselves amongst the most inhospitable lands of terror, using their adaptability and tenacity to wring sustenance from the harshest conditions. They lack the magical talent of the more civilized folk, such as the orcs and elves, yet few mages could possibly stand against a human warrior during a last stand. Their willpower is, itself, a rare form of natural magic that few but the strongest willed could hope to replicate, granting them a chance to stand against certain death and win much more often than simple chance would have. This phenomenon also applies to their religion. Yes, they do worship the gods, probably more than any other race. Yes, I know the narrative spewed by the church, proclaiming that humans are faithless beings and that this is the reason behind no god claiming them. Oh, and that they are sent straight to the depths of the hells. I should. I am the one who first shared such a narrative. You see, Cardinal, what fuels the gods and their servants? What separates a warrior who can barely imbue the tip of his blade with a holy energy from a paladin who is capable of smiting an entire army? Faith. Faith that your god will smite them. Faith that you will do the righteous thing. Faith that your god is real and has your interests in mind. The same faith that fuels humans. Why do no gods claim humanity? Because all of them, at one point, did. And they regretted it. Imagine giving a god, a being fueled by devotion and faith of its followers, access to a power of a collective will of humanity. Now, imagine giving a human warrior a being capable of simply forcing himself to stay alive through sheer will, the ability to call forth divine judgment. Finally, 
Imagine giving all the gods and warriors of humanity that same power. No, it did not go well. Three decades, the entire known world is bathed in blood and fire for three whole decades, as human paladins and priests shattered the land with their blind fervor. Entire mountain ranges, rivers, and at least one ocean were created, but not by the gods, but by the aftermath of humans fighting in the name of their deities. This period of cataclysmic destruction was, surprisingly, fine. Yes, for our senses of such power would be unheard of, but it did not matter because if everyone is powerful, no one is. So why were humans abandoned if they gave the gods such absolute power? Simple. The gods did not know what to do with the dead humans. Yes, the gods already had their heavens, a few already had multiple. It is just that the humans did not enjoy them for long. Paladins of Nor, for example, who were promised eternal battles by their god, grew bored of fighting the same battles day and night, and thus decided to spice things up by duelling not each other, but Nor's angels. And then his archangels. And then him. Until eventually they killed their own god out of boredom, and decided to invade other planes. This was not a singular occurrence. It was not even an uncommon event during that time. In total, three gods had been injured to the point of hibernation during the last thousand years, with none being actually killed. More than 17 gods died during those 30 years. Eventually, humans were considered to be an existential threat to the divine, infernal and material planes. Divine treaties were thus signed by all higher beings, forbidding any from claiming humanity. After all... If everyone is weak, then no one is. That is why no gods claim the humans. Cardinal, I have not told you to stand up. I have yet to tell you the real reason that you are here. There is another much more disturbing question that you must be asking yourself at this moment. If humans are claimed by none and their scot go to heaven or hell, where do their souls go? Well... We are standing upon them, Cardinal. Millions, perhaps billions of souls are buried deep beneath our feet, trapped by change forged by gods now long gone, blissfully dormant. And this is why you are here, Cardinal. The cells grow fuller by the day, the chains becoming more strained as the, the aimless will and fervor of countless push them a bit more every second. You will be taught how to calm their slumber, and oil these chains so as to keep the horde contained. And if you fail, I fear that the sleeping titan that is humankind will not be so merciful to the remaining gods. Oh, and congratulations on your promotion. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank all the T5 channel members and patrons. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Lord Azrakal, Holly's sister, Dragzoon WRE, and Ambrose Catel. Thank you very much.